So I was married for 10 years, but together with the person for 16 years. And he was an alcoholic. So he wasn't the typical alcoholic that you think about that like get drunk and like verbally and physically abusive. He was more like the alcoholic that gets drunk and like makes a mess out of very special moments and doesn't realize that they're messing up the moment. So I'll give you an example. My 30th birthday, I had rented a stretch excursion. I had got a VIP at my favorite um, club at that time because back then I still used to like to go out to clubs and stuff. Um, it was um, Tribeca, if you're curious, out in Fort Lee. I don't even think it's there anymore, but I used to love that club because it had like three different floors of three different types of music and the VIP was pretty cheap. And it was just a good vibe. I love that spot. We used to go all the time. So got my hair done. I still had my locks then. So I got my locks like dyed blonde. Um, got a nice outfit, leather boots, thigh high leather boots. Like I was looking amazing and I was feeling amazing. I turned 30. I was feeling like a real grown ass woman. I had all my closest friends there with me. And so we get to the club. Everything's cool. Um, of course, my husband has started drinking before we even got to the club which i expected um so we get to the club we get a vip and i think i got like two bottles of bellevue and some mixers and the first person that was hammering shit was my ex-husband just hammering shit way too soon way too early we literally just got to the vip so i'm ignoring him as i normally do when he starts to get drunk which is now what i had conditioned myself to do but um so we're having a good time. I'm dancing with my friends. And then he comes down from the VIP and starts dancing with me, but like really grabby and handsy and just like made me feel dirty. Like, and like for me to say that about somebody that I'm in a relationship with, like that's a lot. So at that point I knew he was pretty drunk, but he was still was chilling and having a good time, just being a little handsy. So he ends up going back up to VIP. I keep dancing and then I go up to VIP to like take pictures with the bottles and my friends. And he's literally like hunched over, like on the, like, it was like, um, what's that called? Like couch seating. So he's like literally like hunched over, like laid over. And I said to him, I said, yo, let me take you to the bathroom so you could throw up because you know, if you throw up, at least you'll get the alcohol out of you. And then we could still enjoy the rest of the night. So I walk him all the way upstairs to like the third floor, um, bathroom. He goes in the bathroom. He's in there for like 10 minutes. He comes out. I said, did you throw up? He said, no. So basically you went in there and did what? Like the whole point was for you to go in there and throw up. You don't want to throw up, but you should. So that way you can actually have a good time and be social. Long story short, he didn't throw up. So we go back down to the VIP. He sits down and I'm like, yo, your breath is knocking here. Take a piece of gum. And I tried to give him a piece of gum and put a piece of gum in his mouth. He literally threw up all over me. Threw up all over my leather boots, all over my pants. And when I tell you I was livid, I was livid, but I still had sense enough to know not to put hands on him. I wanted to grab a Belvy bottle and crack him over his head with it. Like that's the amount of rage I felt inside of myself. But instead of doing that, I just made a beeline for the door and got up and fucking went outside because I couldn't be around him after he did that to me. So now I'm outside. And my friends are grabbing me like, where are you going? Where are you going? I'm like covered in throw up. So I go outside and I'm just pacing back and forth because I'm just literally so angry. Then he comes out drunk as fuck. And now he wants to be crying, literally crying tears and apologizing to me. And I'm just like, bro, I don't, now you want to make it about yourself and make it seem like you're the victim when you sat up and got fucking shit face drunk and threw up on me at my 30th birthday party. 30 is a big deal. Like you can't get that shit back. So now like we're arguing back and forth well i'm i'm yelling at him and he's crying and sobbing like a little fucking boy and now the cops are now the cops and security that is around the club is looking at us so you already know when you you can't be acting up when you you know when you out you can't be doing that because they'll just come arrest everybody that's they don't give a fuck so i told him to get out my face I went and sat like outside next door. They had like a church or something. So I was like sitting on the steps of the church and my friends came and they're like, just come back in and dance or whatever. I'm not coming back in and dance with throw up all over me. 
I said, so y'all go have a good time. And I'm just going to call the excursion to come pick us up early. So I called the excursion to come back and it's there. Everybody's there except for my husband at the time. So now we're all looking for him. So now my birthday party, my 30th birthday party has gone from being about me to being about him and his drunkenness and being worried about where he's at and everything. It's all about him now. So we find him in an alley, like on sitting on the ground on the phone with his mom crying talking about how he's a horrible husband and he ruined my birthday and i and i'm gonna hate him and all this type of shit to which i saw him and i said get in the fucking car because this is ridiculous this night is ruined now i want to go to fuck home so now we ride home in the car and he's like passed out in the car and we get home and the rest of my birthday weekend was spent taking care of him because he had the worst hangover ever that is my memory of my 30th birthday and then the next weekend after that, he tried to take me back out to the same club, just me and him. And at that point, I'm just like, I didn't, this is not what I wanted. And I feel like people should always have what they want for their birthday. So for me, my birthday was ruined. My 30th birthday, I will never get that back. And that is forever my memory of my 30th birthday. Um, That's just one of the things, one of the moments in my life that he ruined with his alcoholism. And you know, I know people are saying, well, you've been divorced from him since like 2018. Why are you talking about it now? And it's just like, I've never spoke about it. Like people still are wondering, like, why did me and him get a divorce? Because I, you know, I was really good at hiding, you know, what we were going through and what he was doing and the problems and stuff. You always saw us as happy and like the fun couple and stuff like that, but it really wasn't fun. And that was a, mo a moment that I will never forget and a birthday that <laughs> will forever be remembered as that just alcoholic mess and drama. Um, I definitely healed from all of that shit, but it's like now I don't really, I'm not attracted to people that like to drink, you know, like the drinking for me is like a trauma thing. And I just, I don't, I'm not attracted to that. If you smoke weed, we cool. <laughs> Cause I smoke and I, I don't mind if you could drink responsibly and if we're drinking together, I'm fine with that. But I don't tend to like how people act when they get drunk. Um, and I definitely know that's from the experiences that I had when I was married. 